got here? We gotta kill this man. That's a good one. First cast on the sun. First cast on the sun. <laughs> I love the sun. Just gonna spot lock. Come in. Oh, first cast. Swim jig. Swim jig. Everybody talks about versatile baits. Doesn't get a whole lot more versatile than a, a swim jig. And like Otto Foe says, you know, at the end of the day, it's a jig. So you can sink it and fish it just like you would a jig. And the profile of the head is such that it goes through cover really well. And a lot of times if you put like a paddle tail swim bait on the back of it, they actually do swim and wag quite a bit. I've chosen just to put a Rage Menace on here, which is like a black blue and a black blue jig. Pretty standard. I'm not too picky on watercolor in this lake. It's pretty clear right now, but uh, and a lot of times I like to fish uh, more of a sunfish color in that that condition. But uh, like I said, the fish are shallow right now. We got 67, 68 degree water temperature. Everything is up shallow, so I need something that I can kind of float up but still fish in cover because you find a lot more cover when you're beating the bank. So, weed guard on there, little swim jig. That was the first cast, and I'm about to get into this little shallow bay, so we'll see what happens. You see, I'm just doing little pops with the rod to kind of make that bait kick up and down. It's almost like you're squeezing the reel. That's how you get that action going. Just kind of popping a little bit of slack and that bait just kind of jogs up and down. Oh, that's a good feeling. <laughs> Your swimming action just gets interrupted. You can kind of feel your rod tip, feel them just chewing on it. You need to reel down and rip them. It's a good feeling. So the setup I got going here is a 13 fishing omen black, 7-4 heavy. A little bit longer rod helps me kind of get that swimming action. As I was saying, I was kind of squeezing my reel and softer, longer rod like that gives that bait a little bit more action. And then I'm fishing 40 pound braid. I fish 40 pound braid pretty universally on a lot of tactics. And this is an 8.1 to 1. That's a good bite right there. Come on. That's a good one. Oh buddy. Oh buddy. Oh stay with me. Here we go. Oh. Big swim, big swim. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, there we go. Jeez. We got a spot lock right here. Just lost my paddle. <laughs> like I said, we're, we're, we're drifting around. The wind's pushing us this way, thankfully. But that's why I have a fast gear ratio reel. If the wind is pushing me off somewhere, I can uh, reel up and stay tight on this fish. That was a wonderful interruption. Well, bye. Oh, she's got a bluegill. She's got a bluegill on her throat. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Just chowing. Sweet. Kind of brings me to my next point about a swim jig and, and spring. Bluegills, especially when these bass get around the spawn, um, they bed up first, and those pesky bluegills are always getting around their beds. Um, I'm not targeting fish on beds right now. There are some on beds, but this is a bluegill profile bait if I've ever seen one. So that's kind of the purpose of that. Nice round little frumpy thing bopping around out there. Ooh. Good one. Yep, good one. Oh. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Showing off. It's 
spot lock popped another one like i said that bite is just addicting just addicting so as you can see we got the wind kind of peppering in here um stiff wind today that's why i'm in my kayak kind of off some of the bigger lakes even this little lake's got cappers on it um, so we got to talk about boat control in a kayak when it's windy like this Because I'm really trying to stay a certain distance away from shore so I can make accurate casts and not be right on top of those fish a lot of times Right here. I'm in kind of a flat so I can cast almost 360 But I still want to be able to maintain my speed without continually getting pushed into shore That's where I can fine-tune my speed really easy on this fob. So I've been going about one and a half two on the speed for the trolling motor. That doesn't equate to very much in miles per hour, but what it does do is keep me going in a straight line, essentially the way I want to go. And so the nice thing is I'm facing into the wind going up this shore. So if I get bit, I can spot lock, and spot lock does a really good job when the wind's pumping on it of keeping you in one place. It actually prefers a little wind uh, more than no wind. So, I catch a fish or I set the hook, spot lock instantly, and just in case there's any other fish in the area, I can kind of fan cast from there before moving on. Um, say I'm in some really shallow water, I may not want to spot lock, so in that case, I will power pull down. I got a power pull micro here, so it's in the back of the kayak. Now, I say I hit my power pull right now, that wind's going to push me. So my nose is back to facing the shore. And I'm going upwind, so I want to stay upwind. That's why I'm oh, that's why I'm using the spot lock. But there are a lot of times when I would use power pole over the spot lock. So I guess what I'm trying to say. So two important tools for maintaining stability and, and keeping you where you can make the best casts, keeping you kind of in the strike zone longer, just an efficiency deal. So I'm not really fishing anything special right here. This is literally a bay that will eventually get a lot of lily pads. And they're kind of still on the bottom, just coming out of the mud a little bit. There's really nothing here. It's just a four foot flat. So you think a big flat like this, you'd like to use a bait that could call attention to itself a little bit more. If you're not targeting, targeting isolated spots or chunks of weeds or bass, or probably they're just spread out all across this flat. So you need to bring the bass to your bait. This is just a subtle little jig, but boy, they can find it for whatever reason, they just find it. So you have to have confidence in that. And it's so fun because you just you never know when, where or when you're going to get bit. So you just take it slow, make a long cast, and just kind of keep that thing rolling. Oh, brother, that was a bite. Oh, that feels good. Lock. Oh, it's the best. Not a huge one, but they bite so good. I kind of got to the end of that flat. I wanted to drift back through it and just keep, you know, because if you think about it, your bait is encompassing a pretty small area, so there's got to be more fish in here that haven't seen my bait yet. So, just drifting back through, um, went from about eight, seven feet back to that four foot flat, and now I'm going up against the wind and fishing the other half of the bay, um, and just fishing it from a different angle, basically. So, picking up a couple more fish. Mm. Wow. some grass the further I go up here um, there's kind of a grass bed these things are choking this bait I can't even get it out of most of their mouths here we go Oops, she's bleeding pretty bad got her pretty close to the gills 
I'll let that one go real quick. Like I said, that was in some grass. There's actually a fertilized lawn behind me. And there isn't a whole lot of grass in this lake, but there is right in front of this fertilized lawn. Um, and yeah, the beauty of that, weed guard on this thing, I can fish through the grass too. So I've been trying to stick in like four feet of water, the part of the flats. And then all of a sudden I came across this really ugly stringy grass and boom, caught a fish. I wasn't getting hung up, so. Jig's a good tool in bull rushes, just kind of knocking them out of the way. I grabbed it. Wow. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. Oh man. Some jig bass that thing kind of waked on me and I whiffed on it or it missed it and I put the boat in spot lock and cast back and thing whiffed it so sweet so that's the deal came to a smaller lake to escape some wind like I said I caught fish in weeds I caught fish in bulrushes I caught fish in vast flats all on, a little swim jig here. Three eighths ounce, and I lost my Ridge Menace trailer and found out I don't have any in the kayak. So I put on a little baby goat, which is Z-Man. Elaztec bait, very durable. Uh, not quite the color match I was looking for, but same profile in action, so it didn't bother me too much. And I got plenty of fish on it as well, so. There's a couple baits that really come to mind this time of year and again I can't stress enough how fun and efficient a swim jig is so find your swim jig go throw it in any cover you got up shallow and you'll probably start catching some bass.